Hello, everyone. Um, I hear as a, one of our weekly conversations to discuss the solutions provided by social entrepreneurs and young changers throughout the world. My name is Katja Brasil. I'm a journalist and co-founder of Agencia Amazona Hell, headquartered in Manaus, and I'm also an Ashoka Fellow. In the next 45 minutes, we will discuss here with Congresswoman Joanna Abshana, leader Edney Arapion, and to discuss why the firm lands laws is a threat to the indigenous peoples in Brazil. So now I'm going to address uh, the few logistic issues of this live. First of all, um, the conversation will be held in Portuguese with interpreting into English. Um, click in the interpreting button on the lower right hand corner of your screen where you can click and choose uh, the language in English to uh, channel English to be able to listen to the debates. Please, I want to hear all of you, so make sure you send us your questions on the bottom hand side of your screen. We will try to answer as many questions as we can. And finally, uh, for if you're interested, you can also turn on the uh, the option to have the transcript here on your screen on Zoom. And uh, you can do that by clicking on the three little dots button on your right hand corner of the screen. Now I'm going to introduce our guests. First, I'm going to introduce Edne Arapiung. He is a young indigenous leader of Aldeia of the Magaró in Lower Tapajós, in the lower here's in the southeast of the state of Paraná. He's also the head of the Tapajós Arapiung's uh, Council and he's a studies atmospheric sciences in the University of the West of Pará and he's also part of Young Trans Trans Makers for the for Democracy in Ashoka, Brazil. We're also waiting for Congresswoman Joana Wapichana. She is likely to join us in this conversation anytime soon, and we we're going to start this conversation. Um, Ejene is here waiting for you and to answer and take your questions. So, and you can go ahead and ask your questions and send them here on our chat chat so that we have enough time for all of our listeners here and anyone who wants to ask any questions. So why is this law so complicated for the indigenous peoples in Brazil? In Brazil, there are 350 gr ethnic groups um, which, which, who speak 254 different languages. The Brazilian population, the indigenous population in Brazil is of over 1 million people, according to the organizations themselves. However, the Brazilian government only recognizes the peoples who live in their in their tribes, specifically in which about 900,000 people, and they disregard the other people who live, in, for instance, in the outskirts of the cities. And the indigenous lands are recognized by the federal constitution enacted in 1988. Um, chapter 231 uh, guarantees and ensures the rights to the land, to their social organization, to their traditions, to their languages, to their beliefs and cultures, and the original rights over the land that they have traditionally occupied. And the federal government has to demarcate, protect, and be the steward and seek compliance with such laws. In 20, uh, 2008, this particular article of the Brazilian Constitution was challenged by the Supreme Federal Court, Federal Supreme Court, after a, an action was filed by ruralists and the agricultural lobby against the demarcation of indigenous lands of Raposa Serra do Sal in Roraima, in the north of Brazil. And they filed this lawsuit in the Supreme Court, during which trial the report, the rapporteur uh, of the case, Justice Carlos Aires Brito, has already retired. He gave his opinion on exactly the time frame applicable to the land. In his understanding, land that was occupied by October 5, 1988, could be defined as indigenous lands or original lands, the date of the promulgation of the constitution in Brazil. In other words, if, there, if the, indigenous, the indigenous groups were not in said land, then they would have to prove and their position in land, ignoring and disregarding historical conflicts for the land. And now we're waiting. And the only one indigenous lawyer who managed to present oral arguments at the trial of the case, challenging the ratification of land of, of this group in 2009. The Makushi Indians fought for over 30 years to demarcate this land. Uh, and now specifically with the group of the land actually 
the decision with respect to this time frame was vetted in the Supreme Court, was unanimously disregarded in the Supreme Court, and um, and continuous demarcation and a confirmation was guaranteed. In short, we're going to first speak to Ijene. I would like to ask him a question because in the past two months, Ijene was really on the front line in Brasilia protesting precisely to ensure that the legal time frame was dropped, right? And, and thus far, the Supreme Court has not retaken this trial. So I want to hear from Ijene how it was for you to be part of the protest you know, in which the indigenous peoples had to wait outside uh, the, the Supreme Court for days and off and days and off under rain and sun and all the weather conditions to fight, um, to bring together about 6,000 people fighting for the, precisely the time frame is part of the line to be dropped. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for this live and for being here. I'm in Santarén speaking to you about the landmark ruling, which is one of the biggest threats that the indigenous people are facing nowadays. This is a very important moment to fight against the landmark ruling. And we know that if it passes in the Congress, indigenous lands will be totally threatened, especially with these types of landowners and agribusiness. We've been fighting against a lot of aspects that directly affect indigenous lands. In Baixo Tapajós, as coordinator, I was in Brasilia for 21 days, camping, in order to be able to fight against the landmark ruling and to follow up on it and what's going on in the trial. And for us, this political fight is very important for us, the indigenous people, because it shows that we do have a lot of support from our ancestors, especially. And leaving our land, our territory, our cities, our states, which is where we suffer all these threats, and going to a camp in Brasilia is rewarding when we see how strong we are together. These threats that the government is imposing, trying to not recognize our land officially, to remove our land because of agribusiness and mining, and all of these aspects that completely threaten indigenous people and indigenous lands. So when we get together looking for partnerships and looking for resources mainly to be able to get to Brazil, especially us here at um, Baixo Tapajós, we have to um, be in a bus for three days and three nights to be able to get to Brasilia. And when we are on the highways of Brazil, we see how much deforestation there is because of agribusiness. And we do run these risks when we're on the road. But our fight is extremely important. It is not a sacrifice. We will face anything for our land, for our people, and for our future. We have a lot of young people here that are moving because they are very frustrated with the government. Us at Baixo Tapajós, we feel mostly impacted by all of this because as of 2000, we've been asking to officially recognize our land for our Four of the claims are moving forward. And in this case, we could lose all of our territory here. And this is a huge source 
for us. And it's a huge source of mining, especially as well, and a huge source for agribusiness. We have territories here that are surrounded by agribusiness and a lot of other territories that are being mapped out for mining, for different minerals here in Baixo Tapajós. Thank you, Jane. Um, definitely, you see the first scenario of what's going on in the indigenous lives of Amaraz, whether or not the cutoff date of 1988 will be approved by the Supreme Court. Now we're going to introduce Congresswoman Joenia Wapishena. Welcome, um, Congresswoman. I'm going to briefly introduce you. She's such an important person for our country nowadays in the fight for indigenous lands. Congressman was woman was born in the indigenous community of Coralu da Cachoeira in the area of Muruku in the city of Boa Vista, state of Roraima. She began her leadership role to the, for the defense of the indigenous groups in the legal office of the indigenous board of Roraima, one of the organizations that fought for over 30 years for the demarcation of the group of Raposo de Edusol in 2007. She was the first Brazilian indigenous woman to graduate in law uh, from the Federal University of Roraima in 2006. She was recognized as a Ashoka social entrepreneur. She was elected federal congresswoman in 2018, and she is the first indigenous woman in, in our Congress. In 2009, Joenia was the first indigenous lawyer to have a place of speech to fight against uh, all of the cases and lawsuits that had been filed before the Supreme Court, challenging the confirmation of indigenous lands of Saposo Sete do Sol. So she experienced precisely what several peoples are going through ex as we speak with respect to the challenges of the indigenous lands and demarcation of these territories. So um, there's nothing more important than to ask Shoenia why is this time frame is on unconstitutional? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to send my greetings to the entrepreneurs for Shaka. Thank you, Shaka Brazil, for this invitation. I will tell you why the landmark ruling is a threat to indigenous people. This is a collective right, that, and such as human rights are established on a universal level. And uh, we have seen a huge stepping back in the last few years in an issue related to, to rights that have already been established, uh, rights that are established in the national constitution and are also established by international human rights. Uh, human rights among other things, establishes that humans have the right to religion, to health care, and to land ownership. And the Declaration of the UN on the Human Rights and the Indigenous Rights establishes that uh, uh, Indigenous people have the rights to their lands. And this is one of the landmarks that acknowledge the fundamental human rights. Uh, landmark ruling has appeared in the context, context with the dispute, a very violent one, over the indigenous rights, especially the indigenous rights to land. This dispute, this battle, it has been going on for many years, but the current government has demonstrated that is anti-human rights and anti the rights of indigenous people. Uh, this situation has worsened, worsened. this uh, landmark ruling uh, was uh, seen uh, recently where the congressman that represent the agribusiness one wanted to impose uh, the thesis uh, they wanted to challenge the indigenous rights to indigenous lands. And it was an attempt to do so through a bill of law. Uh, the bill of law uh, attempted to limit 
uh, indigenous rights to indigenous, uh, indigenous land. Uh, the statement was that the indigenous people had rights to indigenous lands that they occupied up to 1988, which was the cutoff date, and when the uh, constitution was drawn up. Uh, the indigenous people have suffered on the hands of the Brazilians. We have fought for justice and respect for more than 20 or 30 years. Other claims uh, for recognition have lasted for more than 40 years. And even today, our indigenous people are still struggling to uh, obtain a ruling on the official recognition of land, of their lands. Uh, and uh, the statement is that those indigenous peoples who did not occupy the lands prior to or up to 1998 no longer have the rights to this land. So there's a dispute for traditional indigenous land. Brazil nowadays uh, has still not concluded uh, this. Uh, Normally has been handed down on this can. 30% of the lands in Brazil are officially recognized as indigenous lands. 98%, 1.23% of these lands are in other regions, in the Northeast regions, in the South regions of Brazil, where the indigenous peoples no longer own those lands. They, and they're still these are examples of more vulnerable indigenous peoples, for example, such as the Guarani peoples. Uh, several claims went up all the way to international court. Uh, one of the tragedies is, the, is that the, there's a high rate of suicide amongst young indigenous peoples. And yes, this landmark ruling opens up the space for uh, lands to be, who are still occupied, for lands that have not been officially recognized to be taken away. Uh, a claim that was filed with the Supreme Court uh, stated that uh, the Islamic ruling will place the lives of indigenous people at risk. This uh, claim was filed together with other claims uh, with the uh, attempt to maintain the indigenous people uh, far from their rights. What is in uh, being addressed today is the claim of the Indians of indigenous people to their land today. Yesterday was a quite a heavy day for me because uh, I had to deal with uh, accusations that uh, Yemen money people were invaded by illegal gold diggers and miners. And the fact of this stepping back. Uh, or this uh, reduction in human rights, and, and which is totally unconstitutional, is a great threat to us. Uh, we know that uh, land grabbers and gold diggers are seeking to invade indigenous lands to a great extent. Uh, for example, there was a case where two indigenous children were were found dead yesterday. So this is just an example of what has been going on. Uh, for example, illegal mining is a crime. Nonetheless, there is no response on the part of the government of his respect in terms of forbidding illegal mining in the indigenous lands. Uh, the, we believe that the landmark really will encourage invasions of indigenous lands. And this is why we are struggling against it. This uh, ruling uh, is a threat to, to all constitutional rights. Uh, 
it, and it all it is also a threat to human rights, not only the human rights of the indigenous people, but of the uh, human rights of all the entire population. So these are public lands. The, the state has to protect these lands, but when a space is opened up for illegal actions, then of course this is a huge threat to us. And today it is urgently necessary, is it is urgent for the Supreme Court to uh, analyze our claim. Uh, Justice Michelle Morais recently voiced the possibility that our claim would be uh, analyzed again. Uh, one of the Supreme Court justices had stayed the proceeding uh, for reasons of uh, other analysis. Uh, however, the, all the justices have to have the majority vote to uh, finally come to a decision on this landmark, the final decision on this landmark ruling. But the issue is that uh, the constitutional rights protect indigenous rights. And therefore this attempt at the landmark ruling is truly anti-constitutional. So, um, so what we're fighting for is the right for official recognition of our lands. These rights are fundamental to ensure the survival of indigenous people. Uh, uh, all sorts of aspects have to be recognized, cultural, religious, spiritual, and so on, and as well as the survival of future generations. And this is why I'm saying that this manifestation is so important because uh, uh, this issue of human rights is important to all society, not only to the indigenous people. So we are asking everybody to protest against this landmark ruling. We want everybody to say no to this uh, uh, ruling. Uh, we are asking everybody to respect the Brazilian constitution and we are asking everybody to respect human rights. We are asking everybody to respect the, de the Declaration of Human Rights as established by the United Nations. So these manifestations are very important because this landmark ruling will place at risk the lives of all indigenous people and their rights to land. Uh, and this uh, illegal exploitation of our lands is a risk to our survival. So thank you very much and congratulations Ashok for giving us this opportunity to voice our concerns. And we want everybody to understand the situation that the indigenous Thank people you, find themselves in. I would like to say for all of you that are joining us now that we're talking today with Congresswoman Joanna Wapichana and Indigenous Leader Ejne Arapion about the issue of which the cut update on the ruling with respect to the indigenous peoples is such a threat. Currently, there's a lawsuit in, uh, in progress in the Supreme Court, which is an appeal challenging the demarcation of the people of the Shirkain people in the south of Brazil in Santa Catarina. Um, the, the case has been suspended since September 15th because the Supreme Court justices always ask to see the cases and to review the cases. And recently, Justice Alexandre de Moraes, as Congresswoman has just mentioned, he has requested to see the case. So the indigenous peoples are waiting for this trial to be, to be restarted. It started in June and now we're almost, uh, um, it's 15, October 15th and the trial still has not occurred on this case. And it was filed by the agribusiness lobby and politicians that supports the extreme right wing government uh, administration of President Jair Bolsonaro, who has mentioned in the past when he was candidate for office that he was not going to demarcate a one centimeter of indigenous land in Brazil. And now in 2021, he has in fact complied with his promise. He has not demarcated any land whatsoever. There are over 300 lawsuits in progress before the Foundation for Indigenous Peoples, which is the agency responsible for land demarcation in Brazil. So how do you, Ajene, see this trial at this moment, considering that it's still suspended? Do you believe that 
this case uh, of going back and forth to the trial and being set on the agenda of the justice system, do you believe that is, it has to do with the pressure that Jair Bolsonaro does with the government? I believe that even the federal Supreme Court, I mean, we always defend the Supreme Court regarding the support that it gives to indigenous people and other people that are more vulnerable, let's say. There's a lot of pressure from these people that want to have this bill so that they can be benefited, especially landowners and agribusiness lobbyists. What they do is pressure the government regarding all these topics because this involves investment, and removing all of the official, officially recognized lands so that all the businesses can exist in those areas. So there is a lot of pressure from these people. And there's also the pressure from our side. We go to Brasilia, we protest, we show all the documentation we take our legal team that helps defend us and they help us with all that legal aspect. And it's unconstitutional what happens. This really affects and impacts the indigenous people. So it's easy to see that we have indigenous people's death. They're trying to take away our rights to life, to livelihood, to housing. When we see that there's this much pressure from the other side, from the indigenous people who try to take back their, their land, They, I mean, that could, because that's what's important for us. We want to conserve the environment. We are concerned about biodiversity and they're just concerned about money. To us, any living being in the rivers, in the forest, they're important to us. And they're also important to the people that maybe don't know that how important it is to their own life. So what we do is go to the federal Supreme Court, we do our rituals, and I know that this has, this is very strong, and it's a strong pressure for the trial. When the indigenous people get together, when we fight for life together, I mean, we know that some sell themselves out but those who defend the rainforest, who defend life, were always fighting for this and fighting for our rights. We think a lot about the future, our grandchildren, great-grandchildren that will come. And I believe that everything that we do, this advocacy work within the our lands within our cities and states, they have a huge impact. And we have this huge hope that we will win, that we will have most of the votes so that they can remove the landmark ruling so that things can be different. Because I know that they will always try to take this right away from us, our land rights, so that they can own the rights and make their own investments and make and of course, with the investments that they make in mining and in agribusiness, we know that they're 
will be a lot of deaths of indigenous people because we're there to protect the environment and they're there to end with the environment too. And we know that this causes deaths. We've had Tupinamba and Guajajara that are suffering a lot with this. And I'm a part of a movement, a group that does land surveillance. And we see these threats all the time. It's very scary for us to know that we are, um, that our lives are at risk. We fight for our land rights and to protect biodiversity as well. That is what we do. Thank you, Ajne. Um, Congresswoman, not everyone is able to understand what is exactly this cutoff date on the ruling because the Constitution in Article 321 ensures and guarantees and recognize the traditional indigenous lands. Our constitution was ratified in 1988. And to this date, these lands are still demarcated according to this provision of the Brazilian constitution, which guarantees uh, the recognition and confirmation of the land and of their costu costumes, morals, traditions, and beliefs of the indigenous people. So what is this cutoff date and this ruling? We know it was introduced after the case of Serra do Sol, which you followed. So no one better than you to explain because you were part of this process at the time um, and you were able to challenge this thesis. So a lot of people do, do not understand or don't know exactly what this means, but what is this cutoff date on the ruling? Well, again, Katya. It's because the audience that is joining us now would like uh, to know. I'm asking this people are, don't that, really uh, understand. Our participants so, and we're always transmitting to several so countries, so that's why. What does Langmar mean? The Brazilian Constitution was ratified on October 5th, 1988. And this, this uh, landmark ruling establishes that as of October 5th, 1988, the indigenous people who were on the lands by the, uh, up to this cutoff date have the rights to this officially organ. Uh, recognized lands. And those indigenous peoples who are not occupying the lands after this cutoff date would not have, no longer have the rights to those rights and to no longer claim ownership of such lands. And so, so the idea is to establish a cutoff date for the indigenous people's rights to such land. And after this cutoff date, uh, the indigenous people occupying the lands no longer have the right, had such rights. Uh, all of this led to a violent removal of indigenous people. Uh, many, of the, many of the indigenous people were removed from ancestral lands. Uh, especially in the South area, region of Brazil, these people were removed from their ancestral lands in order for those lands to be occupied by farmers, uh, miners. I'm referring especially to the Guarani indigenous peoples who occupied the lands in the South of Brazil. Uh, the Guarani people, for example, are nomads and uh, they would move from one region to another looking for fruitful land. And this was especially done during the season of the year. However, these peoples were removed in, by the government itself from these ancestral lands. Uh, and it was a, a very violent withdrawal. Trucks would drive up to and to pack them with the indigenous people to move them from such lands. Our Brazilian laws establish the indigenous rights. And what does this mean? It means that the constitution acknowledges the fact that indigenous people have the right to their ancestral lands. Uh, the constitution also sets forth that the indigenous people 
uh, occupied these lands even before the arrival of the Portuguese explorers. So all of this was established in the Brazilian constitution time up in 1988. And the argument is uh, of those who oppose uh, this stand claim that if, if this is so, then the indigenous people have the rights to such lands, for example, as you put him a beach and other uh, examples. Uh, I would like to state that the current administration of, the, of President Bolsonaro uh, took absolutely no measures to deal with these issues. And there's, there's a possibility that this thesis of the landmark rule could be upheld, will uh, mean that the lands that were not occupied prior to 1988 will not be officially recognized as indigenous lands. We know that our history does not begin in 1988. And our history does not, doesn't even start in 1500. We were here way before that. Uh, there's the whole landmark ruling that establishes our history began in, in, in 1500 or in 1988. Uh, our indigenous people know all about indigenous rights. They're fully aware of that. When someone for example, when someone presented a land deed, uh, many landowners claim that they had land deeds date from the 1940s, but, uh, uh, and the question is, can this landowner use the prerogative of, of registering this land deed officially? However, Many, many landowners uh, claimed that they had the rights to such land by presenting such land deeds because they had occupied this land and uh, carried out farming activities or, or the like. Uh, we know that uh, the indigenous people are protected by the FUNAI, which is the national entity that looks after the rights of the indigenous people. And another issue is the fact that many indigenous communities do not even speak the Portuguese language. They're not familiar with the legal system of the, of the white people, for example. And so there are indigenous organizations that have uh, uh, tried to get information and they are uh, many indigenous peoples are sending their children off to college so that these uh, their children learn about their rights and about the legal system and other such issues. So, and uh, we are trying to make the indigenous people aware of the fact they also have social rights. And uh, with this, uh, uh, advance in terms of the indigenous people being aware of their rights, this uh, has strengthened them, has empowered them in the sense of fighting for their rights. So we want our indigenous people to be informed in this respect. And uh, many, many of our indigenous peoples already have ensured their indigenous rights as set forth in the constitution. As I said, our constitution clearly uh, emphasizes the indigenous people rights to their ancestral lands. I think oh, yes, uh, this is the explanation of the land. Absolutely clear now because this issue has been, it's yes. being translated into English. So there's a lot of people from different countries that are here with us today and they want to understand 
because we're discussing a constitutional issue, right? Um, the Brazilian constitution guarantees this power to the land and this, and the Supreme Court is discussing precisely the inconstitutionality of these matters. Well, I would like to explain the following. As you said, all of this came out of a discussion which started years ago. Everything started in 2005. The peak of the trial started in 2008 when I went and I provided my oral argument at that time. Uh, I went to the Supreme Court to do so. In 2009, the trial was concluded and the reporter at that time it claimed that indigenous rights were would start once the 1988 constitution had been ratified. Uh, Justice Aires Brito uh, cast his opinion and he stated that the, the best thing to do is to recognize the rights of the indigenous people as established in the Brazilian constitution. At that time, there were Farm, farm, farmers that had land deeds dating all the way back to the 1930s. And so this ownership of this land uh, made it very clear that the indigenous people also had rights to such lands. And, uh, but the fact is the indigenous peoples were kicked out, they were removed from those lands. And it's, it's not the fact that landowners had deeds dating all the way back to the 1930s that made them legit, legitimate owners of such lands. Therefore, it's not the fault of the indigenous people that these lands are being disputed. So what we are fighting for is the, for the recognition of the indigenous people's rights to such lands. Uh, this this uh, discussion has been going on for many years. And there was an attempt at one point of, um, you know, especially from the agribusiness uh, parties. Uh, the, ag and the farmers were, in, in their, in the, the, the farmers in, in their fight, in their claims to in, in, in indigenous people, uh, people's lands went to court to, uh, filed such claims. Uh, many actions were taken in this respect. A bill of law was enacted and is being currently discussed at the Commission of Constitutional Justice in Congress. It is, deal is addressing this issue. Uh, the, the, of course, the, the, the lobbying uh, in favor of the landmark ruling is being conducted by the congressmen who represent agribusiness in Congress. This, another claim is being discussed in the, at the Supreme Court. And uh, the, this, this uh, this claim was filed by an indigenous community from the state of Santa Catarina. And the claim uh, was a dispute over the land rights between the, these indigenous people and the state of Santa Catarina. And this, this claim is what triggered the whole issue of the landmark ruling. Uh, but it's the Supreme Court of that will decide who is right in this dispute. And the Supreme Court will decide whether this claim is constitutional or unconstitutional. And once the this final decision is handed down by the Supreme Court, that will be the end of this dispute. Now, if, uh, again, if uh, the this final decision of the Supreme Court is questioned, this will place the lives of many indigenous people in at risk. Thank you, Congresswoman. So 
now we have over 300 lands that may be subject to review or not even be demarcated because precisely of the thesis that is being again under review before the Supreme Court. And Ingené, who's here with us today, who's from the indigenous land of Amara, may in fact lose his territory. So I would like Ingené to talk about this as he's a university student. There's a lot of people who have sent us questions uh, here in the Q&A asking how is Ingené dealing with the climate change in his territory. So this is definitely a very important moment for the indigenous peoples and indigenous rights in Brazil because they are all in territories um, that most areas are protected and under stewardship and they are the ones who are truly protecting the Amazon forest and the Atlantic rainforest here in the state of Sao Paulo. So Ejnejo is from uh, the Amazon. Um, he would share with us today now if this is, if this ruling does in fact uh, is in fact entered in the Supreme Court what will happen with Arapiru and uh, indigenous peoples in your territory? What will happen to them? Since it's an area of the state, it's a plot of farmland. This was one of the territories that was done after the anthropological study. We're still waiting for a government decree. And this was done in around 2006, 2003, 2006. And then the demarcation of land was done. The landmark ruling there, okay, so and within the land, there are a lot of woodworks that were stopped when FUNAI started doing its assessments. And if the landmark ruling passes, all of these plans will come into action. So we will have a lot of people coming into our land as timber merchants and doing their timber operations in our areas. The communities that are around the Maro territory already suffer with this crisis, with the lack of food supply, especially when we talk about hunting and picking fruits, for example, that really impacts the Maro territory. And we have invasions from surrounding communities that are not indigenous people, and they come in to fish and to pick fruit, especially fruit that are lacking where they are. So they take that away from us, and that really impacts us directly. If the landmark ruling is approved, the conflicts will be even worse between the timber merchants and indigenous people and the surrounding communities as well. They created a register within the territory and the indigenous people that live in the three indigenous lands, they haven't had that what they did was create this arable land where everyone can benefit. This land demarcation has, let's say within this land, we've already had all these timber merchants that want to come in and this does cause direct issues to us. And then we do have our vigilantes, um, they're volunteers who volunteer to protect the land. And they did detect some illegal timber activities and operations going on. And then we have the territory Cobra Grenji, which is where, for, for example, miners, in the Pará region who extract these mineral ores, what they do is that they work directly in that territory to extract the mineral ores. And it's extremely negative because that area is a settlement project. 
So once they buy some land here and some land there, the territory is threatened because the area around it is also threatened. And we notice that this is a huge investment that is being made. We already see what's going on in Tapajós in the northern part, in Itaituba, for example, a lot of ports, grain ports. And there's also old extraction, gold extraction, which is illegal and that directly impacts the region of Baixo Tapajós because of the pollution in the river due to these activities. And we try to preserve all these areas. We try to avoid this from happening, all this pollution. So if the landmark ruling does pass, all of these lands that are officially waiting to be recognized will be impacted directly. Up until 1988, I mean, if it's based on 1988, we would be protecting this territory that is demarcated or not demarcated. And they would also go in and try to do their part. And I feel that that would really threaten us and that would cause a lot of conflict because we have been warriors in the defense of this territory and our territory is still being threatened. And there is no officially recognized land process. There's no and even the ones that are officially recognized, they will be reviewed, let's say, if the landmark ruling is approved. So we need it to not be approved. We need to end this landmark ruling because the Brazilian Amazon is responsible for climate balance. And we can notice climate change is quite visible, noticeable. And we can see that in other states that also happens. There are a lot of fires and burnings and what we call the queimadas here. There is a different type of climate and there is a control process linked to this. We see a lot of fires. We know that that is a strategy of different operations of farmers and landowners and that's very concerning to us. We know that we are responsible for the balance of the climate in other states as well. And we can definitely see that there is this continuous change. We are seeing that the weather is changing and the seasons are even changing. It's, it's an urgent matter and we have to end this entrance of timber merchants and miners and others. Thank you, Eugene. We are uh, coming to the end of our live webinar. There's still many pe people who are saying that they defend the cause of the indigenous people, they defend the environment. We have journalists uh, uh, and other people who have, uh, and there are also many people who are asking, how can they help this cause, how can they mobilize everybody to make sure that the Supreme Court revises this opinion? And those who are participating, you can send us your email into the chat and you will uh, receive the recording of this webinar. So you can uh, read again what uh, Joenia Babichena said, which is very important. She explains exactly what this landmark ruling is. And Edney already explained very clearly what is going to happen to indigenous people if this landmark ruling is accepted. The official recognition of the territory is something that is happening right now. For example, uh, the indigenous lands of the Yamamami have been invaded by more than 20,000 gold diggers. There is also invasion of 
other territories. So many indigenous people are suffering because their territories are being invaded. And so to conclude, I would like each one of you to comment how Brazilians and how could people from other countries, how can they help you in this cause? And I would also ask you to ask you, how will the manifestation be taken up again in Brazil as soon as the Supreme Court puts this claim on its agenda? And they, you have the floor, and then I will ask Joania while Peter can I, Joanna, can I talk. have to leave. Yeah. Um, I uh, would like to also profit from this opportunity to thank you uh, for the invite. I'm late for a meeting and I have to leave and I would like to thank Ashoka for having me here today as well for the questions. It is important for everyone that's watching today. You have to support you know, the indigenous peoples, be it uh, by promoting everything that the organizations have been publishing and posting to raise awareness for representations that are in Brazil and for representatives in Brazil not to vote in favor of Bill 490 to manifest and protest by means of online petitions uh, against uh, the ruling on the set of on the cutoff dates. Um, and we don't want any setbacks for international rights, especially we have to see this going on in the different states in Brazil. I want to see for Brazil to, to comply with the human declaration of human rights, to, to, to comply with all the declarations of the OIT and to include in its economic projects um, and a condition that will not receive illegal products in the indigenous lands, especially when it comes to illegal mining. The, it has been responsible for killing children, women and it really truly endangers the life of the indigenous peoples and people who live in Brazil in this sense that we have to seek to draft laws that protect and do not consume products coming from all this violence. It's also important um, where I, I, we'll see a cop, the COP, right? COP26 will be held in Scotland and Glasgow. And we have to recognize not only the importance of the indigenous peoples, especially in the Amazon, but also include uh, the indigenous peoples in the government plans, right? To help their initiatives and support their initiatives to protect indigenous land, uh, which is strategically one of the factors that may be used to uh, be in, to the benefit of the fight against climate change and also to recognize the indigenous peoples in the decision making process and participation, not only as research projects or research objects, but rather um, as uh, to also to allow them to receive financial support for the indigenous peoples to protect their lands, to monitor their lands as well. And so for us not to have any setbacks in relation to what we've achieved so far. So thank you so much. Congratulations, Katja and Ejene. And I would like to apologize, but I have to leave because I am late. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we're going to hand the mic to Ejene so that he can answer how people can support this cause and uh, how can they help support the manifestations in Brasilia until the final decision is handed down by the Supreme Court. Well, in terms of talking about our fight, we're organizing ourselves. We have a lot of organizations that work with us. We have the Indigenous Council of Tapajós Arapiuns, and it organizes together with the Brazilian Amazon Indigenous Council, and then APIB. These organizations will be doing their own work, advocacy work, in order to be able to, to be there for the landmark ruling trial. And those who live further away from, the, from Brasilia, we always have support to get to Brasilia. We do campaigns. We ask people for help in this last trip we had 120 indigenous people from this region we went in three different buses to get there and we actually made it to brasilia one bus stayed there for 21 days until the women's march arrived so we were there for 21 days camping out there it was a way of protesting so the idea is to multiply 
this indigenous cause by going to social networks so that the landmark ruling isn't approved in the federal Supreme Court. We have to show how the indigenous people are being impacted by all of this, how our lives are being impacted by this. We want to fight for life. We want um, to cooperate together with organizations, with other people, and we want to try to see what support we can receive. Maybe we can also get donations. I mean, all of the support is important. It's not only financial support, but it's also about legal support too. All of that is very important to us. And we also want to find more international support and get all these other countries um, to help us because they also have this flexibility in regards to wanting to help the indigenous people in Brazil. And something that's extremely important also is that we have to get rid of this government who that doesn't really care about the poor population or about the indigenous people. And a lot of people defend this government, but they don't realize that all they think about is profit, 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 and their profit. And we are the real Brazilian people, and we don't have any profit. Quite the contrary. They take away our rights in education, in health, in indigenous people's territory. So I hope that we can get rid of this government and get a government, a new government that will actually fight for the rights of vulnerable people, of poorer people, of indigenous people, because that's what we need. We defend the land, and we defend ancestral rights. So I hope that the landmark ruling is not approved. And thank you so much for the invitation to participate in this live session. Thank you to Katia Brazil and to Ms. Joenia. Katia Brazil is helping us. She's working like as a mediator, and I'm also working with them. It's not easy to be a student nowadays because we also suffer persecutions from universities because universities also support the government. We have the dean supporting the government. So it's, it's, there, it's very complicated. A lot of people that are part of the indigenous group in university suffer as well, but we always fight. We always advocate and we hope that soon we will be able to have our rights respected, especially in education, so that we can be in universities learning how to fight against these systems that are extremely corrupt and the, which don't defend our rights to life, to our territories, to our housing. So thank you once again for this opportunity and I hope that we can count on your help. Hopefully, you will be able to contribute as you've been contributing you, today Jimmy. with all your comments. I would like to greet all the indigenous communities in Tapajós, uh, State of Pará, thank Rashoka for your invitation. This uh, webinar was recorded and you will get the recording via email. And uh, we will have a uh, next conversation, which will be announced by Ashoka through social media. So good evening, good morning, good afternoon, and see you.